now subsonic. Five, just under 75,000 feet in three, altitude. Three, two, one. Release, release, release. Clean release. Ignition. Good rocket motor burn. There's Mach 1 trimming now. Trim complete. Unity is pointed directly up and heading to space. Things are looking now great. We are 25 seconds into the burn now, approaching HD Mach 2. Camera data down to the ground and then out to a global live stream. 30 uh, seconds, so Mach 2. See some drops Everything's in the feed, looking really good and stable. Really great uh, ground footage coming in here. Oh, there we go. Now we can see that is the 40 tail seconds. of Unity. And the pilots are lowering the feather 45 now. seconds. Now, as the feather comes down, 50 the seconds the approaching is Mach drop. 3. This is normal and expected. Once that feather is down, the pilots will begin a gentle pull up to a level and attitude. And 60 and seconds, and that is a full duration now. burn, folks. We are headed to space. So at this point, space and the passengers is in the glider. back have so been cleared to unstrap. Potential Our predicted apogee energy. is 279,000 feet and climbing. And if they want to go slower, they bring the nose up. The pilots are now unlocking the feather and. Um, as soon as they do that, right it's going to initiate a backflip for Spaceship Unity. This is normal. We want glide. those windows pointed the down towards the Earth to Khalid, maximize that incredible view. New normal. And all of us will get to hear that on Earth. So Feather is coming up now, so and the pilots are also that. enabling the RCS, or Reaction Control System, which is what they'll use to control the attitude I don't know of the vehicle all, while we're outside the atmosphere. I'm still feeling overwhelmed and excited about what we just witnessed. And there's one person in particular who's got to be having all, all right, of the All right, Feather is all the way up. You can see we are at about 250,000 feet now and climbing as soon as we cross the boundary to space. We'll hear a word from our founder, Sir Let's Richard Branson. Let's see if we can connect with the crew again here. Welcome to Space Unity 22. So, Richard, you just went to space. This has got to be the ultimate birthday present for you. What was it like? So it doesn't sound like we're going to have cameras uh, recording things on board today, and we'll be sure to capture his magical words and share them with the world when they're available. We reached Apogee 282,000 feet. Remember the day, remember where you are, and remember who you shared right, this folks, with. Again, sorry, and remember the name Virgin Galactic the live because today again, space we do is have virgin territory. The, the, and we will be the culmination sure of a life's work of more than a half a century since the world today. rejoiced in and was transformed by humans leaving planet Earth. Sir Richard Branson fulfills his long held dream of experiencing space with his crew. Congratulations again, Richard, and congratulations also to Sarisha and Colin on becoming astronauts today. And welcome back to space to Dave, Mike, and Beth. Oh, you can see them now. So we are on the re-entry portion of our flight now, and the mission specialists are heading back to their seats. Our training team has worked really hard on this portion of the flight to make it very natural and intuitive for passengers. Now, when we talk about space travel, a lot of people know and expect the boost portion of the flight to be loud and thrilling, uh, but what's interesting is re-entry is also very similar as supersonic air is flowing over the vehicle in the feathered configuration, shock waves form on top of the cabin, which are audible to those inside. And for those of you on site watching right, on the so ground, so you should be able to hear a double sonic like boom a as Spaceship Unity once there, again breaks the sound barrier. Travel. Um, but you could tell by the smiles on their faces, they just had the ride of their lives. We are so excited for them to land and party the rest of the day with, like astronauts, in the typical Virgin fashion.
So we are at 22,000 feet now and descending. And as I mentioned All earlier, right, folks, we are now is a at this point. Um, so the pilots Just are under now 75,000 feet in altitude. Plan, and pretty shortly here, they'll be meeting up with our Chase aircraft with Jamil and Patrick to get some really cool visuals of Spaceship Unity. Now, as the crew and spaceship make their way across the desert, they are gliding over one of the most remarkable landscapes in the United States and the largest desert in North America, the Chihuahuan Desert. The area around now also know too, this is our more first time transmitting a restricted airspace and camera high desert, desert, which is one of the reasons to the ground built and here. then out to a global live stream. And of course, uh, our so future please do see some drops in the feed, so much but, but we still have some really great and, uh, know, ground course, footage coming in here. Oh, there we go. Now we can see that is the tail cone of unity. It's visible right over the black and the pilots are lowering the feather now. Of course, has been the backdrop for so many films, commercials, and music videos. And it's now as the feather comes down, the nose of spaceship is going to drop. This planet. is normal and expected. Once that feather's down and locked, the pilots will begin a gentle pull up to a level attitude. And I'm hearing the feather is down and locked now. So at this point, Spaceship Unity is a glider. So it's all about balancing her potential and kinetic energy. So if the pilots want to go faster, they point the nose down. So and if they want to go slower, they bring the, the nose up. Oregon Mountain Desert Peaks National Monument. And that's nearly half a million acres of protected land. And that right now I'm hearing the crews listening to, to a special soundtrack for the glide. It's the latest and release from Khalid, the triple a track digits called in the summer New Normal. Here, also have cool and all of us will get to hear that on Earth during our, our celebration. So stick around for that. Thanks to their spacesuits. They were designed with our technical spaceware partner, Under Armour. I don't know about you all, but I'm still feeling overwhelmed there. and They're excited about what we just witnessed. Flight and and there's one backwards. person in particular uh, who's got to be having also all of the feels right now. You can see him sending a congratulatory shake to his passenger, Colin Bennett, there with him. Let's see if we can connect with the crew again here. Is a manual dump to 200. So also to commemorate this flight from New Mexico, we reached out to the Zia Pueblo, who gave us permission to use their sun symbol on our spaceship. So Richard, you just went to space. This has State got to be the ultimate birthday present meaning. for you. The number four is sacred to the Zia people, and the emblem what represents was it like? the four directions, the four seasons, the four times of day, and the four phases of life. We are honored and proud to feature this perfectly balanced symbol on Spaceship Unity's tail cone as we also celebrate our new home. Oh, you can see the chase in the background there outside of Richard's window. All right, the folks, again, sorry, we're, we're not getting that transmission through the live broadcast, plan. but They're again, we do have lots of recording devices altitude, aboard the spaceship, and, the and we will be sure to release some footage of Richard and the crew up there today. All right, we have three landing gear down and locked. Now the pilots are going to be landing on runway 34 today, so that's coming from the south and towards the north for those of you on-site watching. And for the non-pilots tuning in, those numbers represent the first two numbers of the number of the runway. So uh, for example, 34 is the large degrees on the compass. And now I'm looking down at a beautiful We are just about 1,000 feet above the field now and on the final. Uh, for creating such a beautiful, beautiful place. 500 feet above the all our wonderful team that have been like this for 17 years of hard, hard work to get us this far. Over the threshold? All right, so I'm still happy we could catch a little part of that. It seems like there's a little bit of a delay in the transmission there. It does have a long way to travel. Um, but you could down. tell by the smiles on their faces. And they just had the ride like of their lives. We are so excited for them to land and party the rest of the day with, there. like astronauts, in the typical Virgin and fashion. And the nose is coming down now. Nose gear touchdown. And braking. 
So we are at 22,000 feet now and descending. And as I mentioned earlier, Unity is a glider at this point. Um, so the pilots right now are discussing their energy management plan. And pretty shortly here, they'll be meeting up with our Chase aircraft with Jamil and Patrick to get some really cool visuals of Spaceship Unity. Now, as the crew and spaceship make their way across the desert, they are gliding in, over one of the most remarkable landscapes in the United stop. States and the largest desert in North America, the Chihuahuan Desert. A perfectly the area around Spaceport includes more than 6,000 square miles of restricted airspace and high space desert, which is one of the reasons it was a built here. A beautiful day of flight. What a moment. And of course, our future astronauts will be able to take in on so much and of that natural beauty. And, of course, and you know, of course we also today. have White Sands and nearby. White Sands National Park is just to our east. It's visible right over the Black Range Mountains. White Sands, of course, has been the backdrop for so many films, commercials, and music videos. And it's known for having the largest gypsum Dune field on the planet. There it is. More than half a century since the world rejoiced when humans first achieved space flight, Richard Branson fulfills his dream of experiencing space travel. Congratulations to Richard and Virgin Galactic. Congratulations also to Colin Bennett and Sarisha Bandla on becoming astronauts. And also a welcome back so to space. So also nearby is David the Oregon Mackay, Mountain Mike Desert Masucci, Peaks National Monument, and, and that's Moses. nearly half a million acres of protected land well, that our guest folks, families will be, will be able more to from experience. Our astronauts later in the broadcast, and we also have a special. And even though tech performance hit the to triple digits in this milestone, milestone here, we also have but first cool desert days. Some thoughts and on fortunately, flight. our pilots Chris, and crew can stay comfortable thanks to their spacesuits. Now, both on a capsule they were designed with our technical spacewear partner Under Armour, and they're absolutely beautiful, as you can see on the crew there. They're lightweight and made of flight grid knitted capsule, fabrics, uh, um, which forms Soyuz the spacesuit and also helps the regulate their body temperature. It's quite similar to what the crew just went through. But for them, of course, it's such a personal experience now. And, and what are they going to do with this? How are they going to take this amazing view of the Earth that they've just had and the, the, the kind of brave new nature of what this whole team has just accomplished? How are they going to now? make that part of who they are. So also to commemorate this flight from New Mexico, we reached you out know, to the Zia Pueblo, who gave right us permission to use so their sun the symbol on our that spaceship. Was an amazing accomplishment. It was this symbol epic. is also and part of the New Mexico State flag, flag in what, it's like embedded with symbolic meaning. Space, the it? number yeah. four is sacred yeah. to the Zia people, about, and the know, emblem represents for the, the four directions, opening. the four it's, seasons, it's what, the four times of day, uh, uh, and the four phases of life. We are honored and proud to feature this perfectly balanced symbol and, on Space of Unity's tail cone as we also celebrate our new home. The technology gets good enough, and someone has the tenacity and the vision to push beyond all the resistance and the naysayers and to create a capability. Oh, you can see the chase in the background. There, outside of Richard's window, life to see the world this way. I think the pilots are I mean, coordinating I, I with Chase now and discussing their energy management plan. Galactic, They're at about 9,500 so feet in altitude, and the runway out here now. at Spaceport America is around 4,600 feet and in Kelly, altitude. I want to hear your thoughts too. And you know, also your daughter Delta V, who is on site today, is also she's only three, and she's also a huge space enthusiast just like you. Um, and you know, how does this this milestone affect her and mean? What does that mean for her and also? for you. Yeah, I, I am still emotional from this flight. It is so amazing. Not a dry eye in the studio. But you know, when I think of my daughter, all right, we have site, three landing like gear said, down like, and what it's all about. You know, it means the world to now me. Now the pilots are going to be landing on runway three, today, four today. So that's coming from me, the south and towards the north. For those of you on site you know, watching, that's going to be normal in her mind. And for the non-pilots tuning in, too, those numbers represent the first two numbers of the magnetic heading of the runway. So for example, three, four is 340 degrees on your compass. The other thing that struck me is it's just such a powerful reminder. We are just about a thousand feet above the field now and on final. is also on site here today. She's going to kill me for aging her. But when she was born, 500 feet above the runway, I've been to space 300 when feet. She was growing up. Women weren't eligible. And now here she over the threshold is watching her daughter prepare for a space flight of my own. You know, it just it gives me a good day. Absolutely. You know, and the moon landing is what inspired Sir Richard Branson. And so who knows Main what you know, Delta V watching today, what that's going to inspire her to do. And we're going to hold it just like this for a minute before generation. bringing the nose down. It's so incredibly exciting. It is. And can folks, see this is just celebrating the inside there. Virgin Galactic is 
I mean, and the nose is coming catal- down now. Uh, a catalyst. It's the start of a whole new space age, which is completely nose different gear from the one before. Down. You know, space was something that was unattainable by all but a very and small breaking. group of people. And it was a preserve of government agencies for national pride. And this is totally different. You know, it's the uh, it's the new space age, which is you know for Kelly, for Delta V, for Chris, for me, it's for everybody. And you know, we're making it more accessible to the public. So I know you know the full effect of what happened today will not be felt for some time, but it will touch many generations to come. Now, Chris, you were aboard the ISS for about five months at one that point. That incredible right? drone, Did the drone view footage here as we come in. Get old? And there Gosh, is no. full stop. Uh, at the end of my five months on the space station, we were getting back into our ship. A perfect to landing, Virgin Galactic. Four mission specialists on board from our operational suit, home base, 